Ooh, what's up, what's up, what's up? Welcome back. Today we're working on my to-do file system. So, pitch is, um, I have files like we see on the top right that kind of like indicate uh, a chunk of work that can be done in about a stream. Um, I want to keep these kind of like around on my file system, maybe like organize them so that I can get like several of them laid out in a row that I can kind of like plan what I'm going to do for the rest of the week without having to worry about every day being like, oh shit, what am I going to do today? Um, so I have to, I would like to be able to like plan these out. Uh, there are like links between them, right? Like some things have to happen before other things. Sometimes they don't. So it'd be nice to have some way to like filter based off what can I do next related to this project. Um, and what that starts to look like is uh, folders of files that just look like this. Um, with sim links between them. Uh, where it gets a little tricky is that if I have a two-way relationship, right, I want to be able to see things that block a ticket, but also things that are blocked by a ticket. Then all of a sudden you have like bi-directional sim links, and it might be a pain in the ass to manage like both directions by hand. So uh, we store the links in a database, and the database knows which way the links are going. And it can then, uh, if we like wrap that in a file system that's like custom to us in our use case, then that file system can maintain those sim links atomically and we don't have to worry about things getting out of sync with each other. Uh, that's the pitch. Uh, where we're at right now is we have a file system that we can run. So we can say like, I wanna run my to-do file system with debug mode mounted at this path using this database. And what's in there right now is just a flat list of items. Right now we have three items in here. The items are like, hello world, smiley face. And if we look at the first item, he has like some content in him. So these are all like the things associated with this item. And then he has some children. So hello is a parent of smiley face and world. And these get sim linked back. And so if we go into world, we can see that we have hello as parent. We can go back to his children and we can like do this back and forth forever. Um, what I wanted to add today is I wanted to add some way to like group these things. Um, so what I'm kind of thinking right now, oopsies, uh, what I'm thinking right now is that I'll have like a project image to text, like what we're working on, what we were working on before the stream. And he's going to be a parent of every task that's associated with him. So we'll have like a color and uh you know maybe like rust work and like i don't know black and white uh disco like black and white options like uh what else like wasm if we want to run this in the browser all of these things will be have like a parent child relationship to them and then all we have to do is just say well, let's look for items that have no parent and we can show those in one folder and then from each of these we'll we'll have like other types of links between them like maybe that we need to do rust before wasm color before black and white but those are like a different relationship so if we have one relationship that's parent child and we just store all of these guys as a child of this then we can show things that have no parents and that'll group us by project essentially and what's kind of nice about that approach is our code hopefully doesn't need to know about projects at all Right, we might be able to write this in a way where I, as the only user of this project, <laughs> write a custom filter that says, hey, I wanna like name I wanna create a filter and I'll call it projects. And this projects filter is going to execute some sort of SQL query that will basically filter for things with a, without the specific link. Um, and if we store that in the database, hopefully it will just kind of work out um, that we'll get the folders that we want. And uh Maybe then in the future, I might want to see some sort of other type of relationship, right? Like things that are maybe don't block anything or things that are blocked in, in a project or something, right? Like we cannot, we'll be able to write like custom queries later that uh, show more interesting links. I'm hoping. We'll see though. We'll see. Um, and so that's what I want to do today is add some way to add this filter. Um, and so I think plan of action is... First, just add like a call to the database that allows us to adjust, like a append custom filters based off relationships. 
Uh, then we're going to need to like store those relationships in the database so that like next time we mount the file system, we don't have to like rewrite those every time. Then find a way to like present that in our file system. And then if we get f super far, then we'll be we'll add a way from the file system interface to like edit those. But I'm not really sure we'll get there. Um, yeah, so that's the plan. That's the plan. Let's just get moving. So. If we go into our code base, we have our database class, and then we also have our database tool. So our database tool is just like a shitty little command line app that we can use to like interact with the database directly. Um, so right now we can like add relationships, create items, add item relationships, list items. And I guess uh, in order to test this, we're going to have to have some sort of way to like run a filter, right? This will just be like our little, our way to like get some code running so that we can see what we want to see. Uh, so let's just say run filter here and it'll create an operation run filter. And if we see that operation run filter, we'll execute some something that we haven't yet. Run filter. <coughs> and I guess for now we'll just say db run filter. We don't really know what that looks like yet, but uh, we can just kind of start running it. We can start writing and we'll see where we end up. We'll see where we end up. <coughs> okay. So what do we want to do? Presumably we're going to want to like return items that match our filter, right? Say we're looking for a list of items that have no parent. Returning that makes sense. So maybe we'll return like a vector of item IDs. That seems reasonable. And we'll mark this as unimplemented so we keep compiling. And what is our like input here? Our input is probably, uh, well, I guess it'll be like a list of filters. And what is a reasonable filter list? Probably like a vector of filters. I guess it depends on what this looks like when we actually run our query. So maybe before we do any of this, let's just like try to figure out a query that gets like the one use case that I care about right now, right? Which is find all items that have no parent. What the fuck does that look like? And then maybe once we have that SQL query, we'll have a better idea of what like an API that's more generic will look like. Um, so like, what is that? We want like, uh, I guess let's just maybe pop open SQLite browser first. Um, and then we can kind of fiddle around in there and move back into the code base after that. Um, so I have to nick shell SQLite browser. Give her a second. And okay. SQLite browser, browser, and we're looking at our database and our database has files. So he has hello world smiley face with file IDs one, two, and three. He has relationships, so in theory we could have many relationships. In our little sample case right now, we only have one relationship, which is a parent-child relationship. Um, we use plurals here because uh, if you have a folder of these, then you don't have a folder of parent, you have a folder of parents, right? Um, and then I'm relationships, we just map our, uh, f we say for each, like, each item in here is one link. So we say that we're linking between items one and two with relationship ID one and one and three with relationship ID one. So this turns into hello world is a parent child and then hello smiley face is a parent child because those were the three items that we have. Okay, so what's our query here? Say we want to find items with no parent. So probably we're going to go through each of our files, select We'll put star here for now, because I don't really know what it's going to look like from files. And so we execute this, and we get hello world smiley face. Great. Um, we're probably going to want to like join uh, item relationships on files ID is equal to item relationships to ID, I guess. Right, because in our case... Um, if we want no parents, then we would have to be the child, which is the right side, right? Parents left, child right. So we would be the right side, we're two. Um, 
And okay, so here we see that hello world or the hello has no no match there. Uh and let's see. What what else could we end up with here? I guess can you join on relationship ID and relationship ID is equal to one? I don't really know if that's legal. Looks like it is. So we just won't join if we're not in the right relationship. Okay. And then... So, this is a bad test, it feels like. Because we only have... One relationship. Um... Is that reasonable? Uh, I guess it's fine. I think that we'll probably get a feel for this is right in this scenario. We can always beef it up later if we need to. Okay, so we can select these from these. And I think that you want to, like, basically check if there are any non-null for an ID. Um... Or we just say this is valid if this is null. Yeah, if this is null, then we have no parent. Okay. So can we say like where uh, relationship ID is null? Okay. That seems pretty reasonable. So what what are we actually doing here, like, in the generic sense? Let's kind of copy this out and look at it in the code. Hola, how's it going? How's it going? So here we had some function we were running. Oh my god, I forgot that I added a bunch of tests here, so if I jump to the bottom, I don't get go anywhere useful anymore. Where I did before. Didn't I have a function here that we were calling from the DB tool? Am I high? We were calling run filter, which exists. Okay, here we go. So we can just kind of say, here's our example. So I guess we want to select ID from files, left join item relationships on files ID. So this is probably relevant. Is this probably going to want to be parameterized? This is probably going to be parameterized in some way. Um, okay, so what, what is like the generic thing that this is saying? We're saying we are, we have some like join constraints and then a final constraint. Um, is that true? So, say we called this with, like, run filter, and we're looking for, like, at a high level, we want to filter out anything where there is no parent. So, what, like, files, I, hmm, it's basically this is probably one of the two constraints. This is another. So, this is, like, what is this saying in terms of, like, concept? The concept here is that we are the right side of a relationship. And then we're looking for like a final filter on that where either we matched or we didn't match. Okay. Sure. So we could maybe do something like uh, filter. Let's see. We have filter based off of like a relationship and we're filtering for items where where the item is on the right side and the relationship id is this and relation id equals one okay and so then that gives us, then then at the end we're saying that we want like the inverse of that. I wonder if we can get the inverse of this without, without having to do this like is null at the end. Let's do like browser. Let's look at this again. 
because maybe that would like simplify this in some way. So select star from files, left join item relationships, relationships on item relationships to ID is equal to I files ID, right? So this is, can we like, Okay, say we didn't do like left join. Say we did like just join as a whole. So here, here we get the inverse of what we want. Can we like invert this in some way? Uh, you could say like select star from files where files id not in this is that like something i can do no uh returns five columns expected one. Oh, but i can just say here files id okay does that get me something more sane so here uh, here we have this. So we have our like sub query where we're basically saying that this is our join constraint. And then we invert it. Sure. Uh, okay, that seems like maybe maybe like semantically the same, but might map better to the concepts that I'm thinking of in my head. So we could have a uh, filter relationship, which seems reasonable. So we have like a re we we look for things that have or do not have this relationship. Um. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this whole thing. Uh, sorry, this should say and relationship ID equals one. This whole thing is basically saying we have this relationship. And then at the end, we can just say select star where we are in or we're not in. Um, which seems reasonable, which seems reasonable. And then if we wanted to like, if we wanted to like chain these guys together, you could just say and files dot id in other thing so we can kind of like build up maybe some like sub queries based off of our filters and then just specify in or not in based off of the filters like positive or negative that seems reasonable okay okay so say we have we have this filter relationship item what does this look like uh enum filter he has a in relationship uh or sim maybe like has relationship where we care about the relationship side uh as well as the um relationship ID and then we can say that we have a bunch of relationships uh, so here like say we just have our single singular filter so we have a singular filter that is has filter has relationship and here we know that we're on the relationship side parent nope uh source and relationship id one because we just happen to know that about our database right now okay does that compile am i am i high no, okay that does compile um and then i guess we have the other inverse of this which is like does uh 
does not have relationship. Is there like a more concise way of saying that? No relationship. Hello, hello, welcome. And okay, so we're, I guess we're saying that we're looking for no relationship where we are the destination of child. So we are, we are not a child. Um, that seems reasonable. Seems reasonable. So now what do we do if we have that? So we can then say that like for each of these filters, I guess we would just like append that to our thing. So I guess we have select star from files where but where and then for each thing that we for each filter we just append another thing here that seems maybe reasonable so we can say that our query string is equal to select uh, I guess it's files.id from files where Okay, and this should be a string, not a string reference so that we can append to it. And then we just say match filter. We have filter has relationship uh, side ID. And here we just chuck this guy in here. Like this um so where files dot id not in this shit show okay now we need to actually pass in parameters i guess and ideally we would pass them in as like uh how do you say, uh, you don't want to pass them into the string directly, right? I could write in here directly. Hold on one sec. Let's get the compiler errors all the way. Unimplemented. And this should be, uh, let filters equal this and query string append filter or something. Push string maybe, push stir filter. Uh, and this shouldn't be filter, this should be a filter stir. Yeah, like this. Nice, nice, nice. Um, and, okay. So, where this gets kind of wacky is that if I want to, like, actually inject these guys in here, I could basically change this behavior uh based off of the input i think that's right actually so in this case we'll say that basically if we're matching from or to on the relationship depends on which side that they passed in so we can uh, match side and we can say let uh side filter string is equal to if we are, if they pass in destination, we are returning this. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, is this right? Has relationship where we are the destination, yeah. Or, if we are the source, we are passing from ID here instead. Okay, so here that just makes this stuff go away and turn into a side filter string. Okay. Okay. And relationship ID equals one. Okay, so this is where I was trying to get to earlier was that here I'm passing in one directly here. And it seems kind of weird to like inject that into the query string instead of passing it as a parameter. But I guess we know 
we know that ID has to be a number. So we don't have any like risk of SQL injection or anything here. So I think I'm actually just okay with just passing in a, a relationship, the ID directly into the string. So we can say let relationship ID is equal to, uh, we'll call it I64, I guess. Uh, ID as four is ID dot zero, and <coughs> I'm just doing that because I think that you can't pass in uh, ID dot zero here. I think it doesn't like that, but I can push it pass in ID I sixty four like this. Um, and is that reasonable? Oopsies, I deleted the thing that I wanted. So here, format files ID not in this. So we have the where. This should have a space after it. And this should probably also have a space after it. And now we have a query string that seems kind of reasonable for has relationship. So, okay. Um, and I guess the inverse of this is like very, very similar. It's just that this becomes like this becomes files in, not files not in. But I guess for now, let's just continue on and uh, push. Let's execute this query and see if this actually like fucking works at all in this state. So we can say, uh, let mute statement is equal to self connection, prepare, and we pass in the query string. And then we just execute the statement. So we say statement, uh, state, state, mint, query, map, item, or I guess this is row. And we're only selecting the ID, so we should say let ID equal row dot get the first thing. And then okay, this is we flag this as an i64, and then we return item id id. Okay. And then we unwrap and like what map x to x dot unwrap because we're skipping some error handling, and then collect all this into a vector. And now for now we'll just return vector of item IDs. And I think. I think that'll work if I just go like this. Uh, yeah. Okay. So if we run this now, uh, we go back to our little DB tool and we just run run filter. Okay. So cargo run DB tool test DB run filter. Not implemented at 370. Okay, 370. What's not implemented here? Uh, because we passed in no relationship instead of has relationship. Okay. Uh, we actually don't do anything after this, so we can just say uh, print line. Let's see what we got back. So here we are printing relationships where what? Uh, where were we? Where we have a relationship. Uh, we kind of fucked this up. We're supposed to be printing files that do have this thing. So if we are looking for items where we are the destination of ID 1, we should be getting both children of hello, so IDs 2 and 3, which we do get. And now we also just want to do like the inverse of this, so... I guess we only care about the inverse of this for now. We actually don't care about the has relationship filter. We actually don't care about any filters except for this one. But I do want to like build it in a way where it'll be easier to extend later. Because I have a feeling that I'm going to want uh, to tack on extra stuff he here, right? I can imagine wanting something like, I am a part of this project and I am blocked or and i'm unblocked so i know that i'm going to be stacking these relationships on top of each other um okay 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 
So, but for now, for now, this makes sense. Uh, we don't have to worry about this anymore, and we'll just write not in. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, does that make sense? I think so. So let's run it. And so here, that gives us what we want. All items that uh, have no parents. And we can actually tack on some stuff into the db into the database to see that we get multiple. So if we say like add item, and we're gonna make a new item like no parents to. Uh, add item is not a valid operation. What is the valid operation? DB tool. It's create item, of course. Of course. Create item. So now, if we run the tool again, we should be able to say list items. Here we have uh, a new item, no parents to, with no relationships. And hopefully now, if we run the same filter, or what is it, a uh, run filter, we see item one and four now. Both don't have that thing, which is good. That's a good sign. That's a good sign. And then if we then add item relationship between one and four with relationship ID one. So we say now that um, we're gonna make item four a child of item one. He now says that he is a child of one. Now when we run our filter again, we get item one only again. So this is working. This is working, which is good. Which is good. And so now, I guess, is that like actually done? Like are we, uh, no, because we need to be able to like specify these filters externally. So let's do that. So we're gonna say, we're gonna take in some filters and this is gonna be a vector of, or I guess we can say it's a just iterable thing of filter. Filters need to now be public to be part of this API. So we can just say, uh, Pub enum filter. And I guess maybe to be a little bit more specific here, I'm just gonna call this uh, item filter instead of filter. And now when we go back to our DB tool, um, let's maybe uh, specify these filters on the command line. Uh, I don't really wanna deal with that. I don't want to deal with that. So let's just do it in code. So we'll say uh, let filters is equal to first. We'll try with nothing. So here we should see all items, which we don't. So this is fucked. Uh, why? What the fuck? Here, did we not save? What are we supposed to be doing here? We're supposed to say, select files ID from files where, and then probably we just print, we just run nothing. Can I print line uh, query string? What are we fucking doing? Because I would expect if we pass no filters in, that nothing happens. Like we just get everything. Select files ID from where we're not in. What the fuck? Why is this happening at all? Print line. Oh, because I fucking left this in here like an idiot. All right. So now uh, he's mad because we append this where no matter what. Um. So I guess we can just say if filters len is not equal to zero. Uh, query string plus equals where. I don't know if this is valid, Rust. It might be. It might be. Let's find out. Okay, so here we just run select IDs from files. Great, so we get all of them. And then if we tack on our uh, relationship, run filter, uh, where we say, what db uh to do fs db filter item filter had no relationship where i am the relationship dest and uh i'm relationship id one 
where I do not have the source chip. So now we should go back to getting two, three, and four. Uh, but what if I, where I am the destination is the one that we actually want. Cool, okay. Okay, that seems to be working. That seems to be working. And maybe it makes sense to try to like populate the database with like a more realistic setup um, just so that we can test a little bit more thoroughly and like be a little bit more confident that things are correct. Um, so let's kind of just Let's, let's populate the database with um, some of the stuff I wanted to work on for the image to text stuff. So we can do uh, image to text will have uh, a couple chains of investigation. So we'll say uh, predict, predict black and white will block predict color and then over here we'll have rust will block wasm and simd investigations uh and then wasm will block web ui of some sort okay so that's one two three four five six seven things okay so maybe we write a like test sh or gen db sh user bin and bash and he's just going to call the db tool a bunch to create a thing uh so we have target debug db tool um is it db underscore tool yes and i guess we're going to have our db path as an argument And the first thing that we're going to try to do is uh, remove that thing. Uh, ah, it's, let's think, let's think. Yes, I think that we would have to actually remove it. Um, so we can say if, uh, I think it's dash E for exists, DB path, then return, uh, echo db already exists and return or exit one okay let's just try that for a second so chmod plus x gen db um test db already exists uh that's good uh we call it test uh gen db test db already exists test db two we're good. Okay, okay. So the reason I'm saying that we have to do this is because um, we aren't we don't have a way to like retrieve item IDs when we create them, so we just have to assume that nothing else is in the database. So we have target debug db tool create item image to text. So this is the project that we're trying to create. Um, and so let's Generate the DB. Image to text is not a valid operation. Uh, oh, because we have to specify the DB path. Okay. And now we should have a test DB2. And probably in there, he's got the image to text thing, so we're chilling. Arm dash R test DB2. And now we just start banging out the items. So we have Rust. Uh, Wasm, SIMD, black and white prediction, and color prediction. Okay. Um, we have, we want to create relationships. So this is going to be uh, add relationship. And the relationship is uh, parents to children. And we're going to have another relationship of blocks and blocked by. Okay, lining up so far. 
And so then we can just start tagging stuff. So we can, for each thing, so we have uh, items two, three, four, five, and six. So it should all be linked back to one. So target, we're going to add item relationship between one, two, and one. So this is item one, item two, image to text, Rust, image to WASM, image to SIMD, image to text, black and white, image to text, color. And all of these have the parent-child relationship. Then we need to start adding like the blocks blocked by relationship. So here we're going to say that Rust investigation will block WASM and it'll block SIMD. Fuck. We forgot that we also wanted web UI here. Uh, and web UI is just going to make this go to seven. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Cool. And three blocks four, two, or sorry, Rust blocks Wasm, Rust blocks SIMD, and Wasm blocks web UI. Okay. And then on the other side of things, um, we're going to have two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we just have that six blocks seven. Are you looking to create something like a Gantt chart? I don't think so. I don't think so, but maybe. I don't... I think I just want the relationships where Gantt charts kind of, like, bake in amount of time things are going to take. I don't really think I'm ever going to be planning far enough ahead that a Gantt chart is, like, relevant. But I do just want to, like... I'm just trying to, like, categorize things in terms of, like... Can I do them today? <laughs> like, what am I going to do tomorrow? Uh... We'll see. Okay, so this is like a kind of more realistic look, I think. If this if this runs correctly, then we're chilling. Um, so can we say gen db? Okay, so that worked. And if we try to mount that, uh, let's see if we can like navigate that folder and feel like it makes sense. Okay. So, this is odd. The fact that we only have three items here is, like, a fucking problem. Am I high? We have one... Two, we should have way more items than that. Maybe my file manager was, like, caching stuff? That's... Pos yeah, it was. Okay. So, here we have... Uh, project has these children which this is blocked by that this blocks that we got we might have got the relationship order backwards yeah we kind of did uh on blocks blocked by so let's just fix that so unmount arm dash r test db2 and we go back to our generate db script which is here and just on the blocks blocked by we can just say uh, locked by and blocks here. Am I high? Is this right? So we said well, it should go it, if the first thing is parents and the second thing is children, then we're saying like one is a parent of two. So here, if we're saying two blocks are... Oh, yeah, we did get it backwards. Okay, blocked by blocks. So Rust blocked by WASM. No, this was right. So we should see saying Rust blocks WASM, Rust blocks SIMD, WASM blocks web UI. Why is it backwards? Am I high? Gen DB. Hey, do you still work in the industry? Uh, I'm taking a break for now. Kind of like on like a one year vacation to recover from burnout. And my burnout recovery is just coding more, which is kind of fun. Maybe burnout's a little strong, but I was, uh, yeah, I felt like I needed a break. <laughs> so this is what we're doing instead is fucking making our own project planning software. What the fuck am I doing? Uh, but you know, <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, okay. SQLite met metadata 
and let's look at the test db2. I feel like I'm missing something. So we have relationships where we have two blocks blocked by. Item relationships, we have two should block three. And what are our items? Two should block three. Okay, so what the fuck is the problem? When I mounted this, it felt like it was backwards. Felt like it was backwards, but let's look again. Uh, so we have... This is blocked by WebUI and blocks Rust. And parents image of text. No children. Blocks WASM. Blocked by color prediction. It does, I don't understand why the blocks blocked by relationship feels backwards here. I, like, it just feels like there's a bug somewhere. Because here, the, like, parents, children is, like, matching in the way I expect. Where, well, maybe not. Let's just double check that. So, oh, what the fuck did I just do? Okay. So, I added relationships between one, image to text, and everything else. Where image to text was always on the left side of the relationship. So everybody has a parent image to text, if I, if that's working correctly. Parents, image to text, and image to text should have children, all of these guys. So that's fine. So why the fuck is blocks blocked by different? Because two should blocks three. Oh, no, wait, hold on. Maybe I'm backwards. Uh... Let's see if that, that makes sense to me. So, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 all have one parent 1. 3, 4, and 5 all have one blocks 2. No, okay, this is just backward. Backwards. Okay, I fixed it in my head. No necessary changes for real, but my understanding is now different. And we can generate the DB again. Mount. And... Now we should have that, like, if we go into this, this Rust blocks SIMD and WASM. WASM is blocked by Rust, but blocks WebUI. Okay, all that's lined up correctly now. And why were we doing all this? Because we wanted to see um, if our filters were working correctly. So let's run filter on testdb2. And he should be getting one thing, which is that the um, there is one project that has no parents. And then I wanted to see, maybe we can adapt, we can push this a little bit further. And I want to see uh, which items are unblocked. So I guess that's just relationship ID 2. The same thing. So we just want to know if we have... Uh, hold on. Yeah, nothing that blocks us. I think that's right. So here we have item ID 1, 2, and 6, which I think lines up. We have... Uh, oh, I guess we can uh, list items, and that will give us... So item 1... Oh my god, these are so hard to read. Item 1, which is... Image of text, is not blocked by anything, which makes sense. 2... Is Rust not blocked by anything? And 6, which is I have color prediction unblocked? Ah, fuck. <laughs> we might have got these ones backwards as well. But that's okay. So we were getting three that don't that don't have any blockers, which seems reasonable. It seems like this is working. I'm pretty sure this is working. Uh, we probably just got this order wrong. But that's fine. Whatever. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Okay. So, now that we have this set up, uh, I want to add a way to like persist the filters. So now we can try to persist the parent-child relationship in the database and pull that out when we open the file system. Because then, in our file system, we can just have like projects as a directory. And projects are just things with no parents. So, what does that look like? I guess we're going to have to store our filters somewhere, which means that this item filter um, needs to be able to be like put into the database. 
Okay. Which means that we'll have to have a table for this. Okay. I guess for now, since there's only one type of filter, it's kind of hard to guess what like the future database layout would be like. You can imagine if you had like filter two with like several inputs, do these two types of filters need to be stored in different tables? Probably. How do you like compose them? Not really clear. Um, but for now we can just only think about this singular case. So one of the things that we're going to want to store, I guess, is like, uh, filters. And so each filter, I guess, having an ID makes sense. Having a name also makes sense. And then, uh... We probably want to like make make a f mm, we want these to like compose in some way, right? We want to be able to say run filter two and three together. So I guess one is that we have our filters. That's like these are the names of the filters. Uh no. No, 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 no. So Let's think about this instead. Let's think about this again. So we're going to have... We want something that says basically run... So for the filter with the name projects... Uh, we're going to want to run no relationship... No relationship... Some, like, inputs... And maybe a second thing, just hypothetically, hypothetically, um, which means that we're going to have to store a name of a project or of a filter. And then this is going to like look in the database, like probably something like uh, no relationship filters. Project I the for the filter ID filter name ID projects. So this will end up with like one projects. Then we will say iterate over all of our filters and pull out all the ones that map to filter name ID. So this will be like one and for the ID. And then source destination or something. What is this called? Side and ID. So side relationship ID. And then you could you could end up with multiple of these in here, and we'll just run them all. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. That seems reasonable to me. And then if we were going to add on, like as relationship filters, we could then do the same thing, right? Things that have a parent and a child, you could just stack them on for like like this. And then for each filter, you just have a new table and you just amalgamate all those tables. That seems reasonable to me. I think that's reasonable. Okay. So we're going to have to make two tables here. One is the table for uh, filter names. And this... I guess maybe call, we're calling it filters is fine. Filters. Um, and so his, this has a ID and a name. And then we make a second table that is the uh, no relationship filters. And he has the filter ID, um, filter ID, which is a integer, the side, which is also an integer, and the relationship ID, also an integer. Yes, 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 yes. And then we have some foreign key constraints to throw in. 
So we have a foreign key, filter ID, references, filters ID. Uh, side is fine. There's no foreign key there. But the relationship ID references relationships table. And I guess having a unique set of constraints here makes sense that so we don't have duplicates. Filter ID, side, and relationship ID. Okay. Okay. Uh, what is this bitching about? Here. Perfect. Perfect. And then this is not create relationships table. These guys need their own names. So this is a create filters table. And this is create no relationships filter table. I'm not like super happy with this name, by the way. This is like seems ambiguous to me, but we'll live. Uh, so where are these guys defined here? Uh, and what was the other one? Create no relationships filter table. And so here we say error failed to create filters table. Here, failed to create no relationships filters table. Okay. And both of these are going to be derived from some failure from Rust QLite. Derived is probably the wrong word, but related to, they will come from these. So we can just kind of smack a little source thing on there and we're chilling um if i run cargo test we should just see no failures which means that the the call to the new like creating these tables will still work because i have a bunch of tests that like use the database so if these were like malformed sqlite statements like if i just put like a bunch of commas there or it shouldn't be all of a sudden all of my db tests start failing because there's syntax errors everywhere so this confirms at least I didn't break anything that already exists. And um let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Now we just need a way to load those filters back. I guess first we need to insert some filters. And then also I should flag that at some point we started this. So we'll say at some point before 5730, we did we started working on this. Uh okay, so let's add a function to add a filter. Add filter. So he's gonna have a name and a list of filters that he's gonna run. Right? Simple. And what's that gonna look like? So we know that we're gonna have to insert into the filters table the new name. So uh, insert into filters name values, I think, is the syntax here. Uh, and then we say, we'll probably do this all as a transaction. That makes sense. So we'll say, let transaction is equal to uh, self connection transaction unwrap. We unwrap until we understand what the function is going to look like, and then we can do all the error handling stuff at the end. Um, then we say transaction. Is it execute? Yeah. Execute this with name. Okay. And this needs to take itself by mutable reference. And I guess we can be slightly good citizens of our own project and start writing like write a dummy little test here so we can call this what insert filter uh add filter to db and we can just see how this fucking fucks up uh so we create a fixture and then we say add filter and we are going to put I guess we need to make sure that we have valid relationships to work with. So we will make a relationship and two items. Uh, I guess we don't need any items here. We just need a relationship. Uh, okay, so we have a relationship to work with. And we can just add a filter with the name of my filter. 
Okay. And we need maybe, I guess, a filter item filter with the only possible option. We'll say that we want to have no relationships where we are the destination of relationship ID. Easy. Okay. Okay. And we probably just also need a little square bracket here. And then probably right now, if we test and we like heavily fuck this up uh, by just like putting in some like garbage text here, that one test would fail, but it's not. So we're doing something wrong. We didn't. So we add the relationship. Why is this not fucking failing? Uh, because we didn't unwrap here. Now it'll fail. Yep, okay. Syntax error, sick. And now we go back, cargo test, and that works. So we've got the insertion of filters correct. I guess probably we should add a way to uh, get the filters. Um, and he's going to return, I guess, a vector of like, names and filter lists so here are the filters that we're going to run on each thing or we could just say get items uh for filter um i don't know i don't know i don't know what i want that to look like yet because we're going to say that I have filters that I want to run. I'm going to make a folder for each filter. And then I'm going to run that filter. Right? Because we're going to have like items uh, projects. Where projects is a filter. And then in items projects we're going to want to see what, like the items that go with it. So like hello. Like image to text is what we're going to want to see in there. So I guess... We're going to want to first get all of the possible filters and not run them. Just get their names. And probably their IDs as well. So we're going to have what? Like pub struct filter. Uh, this is kind of weird because we said that before we called this thing an item filter, which is like an individual filter rule, uh, which is different than like the filter that we're returning here. So maybe we call this like... Uh, item filter rule here, which makes this guy be able to be called filter. We also want a filter ID, which is just nine sixty four, which is like a reference to his row on the table. And uh, he's probably going to want to do some sort of like EQ, partial EQ, almost certainly. But I guess we can just leave him as debug only for now, and later figure out if we need extra things. So he's going to have an ID that's a filter ID associated with him, as well as a name. Um, and do we want to store, like, the filter rules that are associated with this guy? We could. And then we wouldn't have to add a function to, like, run the filter by name. We could just extract the filter rules and apply them again later. So we could do that. Um, so we can say uh, rules is a vector of item filter rule. Sure. Uh, which then makes this make more sense. We have a get filters function, and he returns a vector of filters. Okay, easy, easy. Uh, this is unimplemented for now, but that means that our test now can call get filters. Um, and maybe even he can get the filter by ID. Does that make sense? No. We'll just say, we'll just look at all the filters here. Uh, so we'll call this, and then we'll call fixture db get filters. And we will what? Assert that the uh, filter length, there's only one of them, because we only inserted one. And then we're going to want to look at the first filter. And we're going to want to say that the first filter length should also be 1. 
uh, sorry, not filters. We want to look at the, the rules associated with this filter. We're going to want to look at his name. And we're going to want to make sure that we put it, the name is my filter, like we inserted. And I guess we'll want to look at the rule. So well, the first rule should be uh, item filter rule, no relationship with relationship side dest and relationship ID. Okay. That seems reasonable. And if we run cargo test now, we're going to get a bunch of stuff that doesn't even fucking compile uh, because we didn't, we should have derive debug EQ partial EQ here. There we go. And we failed at not implemented at line 377, which makes sense because we have not implemented this get filters thing yet. Okay. Okay. So we have the filters, but we don't have their like rules inserted in the database yet. That's okay. Let's start by just getting the filters back and then we can stitch together the like rule injection later. Um, so let mute query string. No. Statement. Let mute statement is equal to self connection repair. And what are we preparing? Select something, everything for now, from filters. I guess that's it. <laughs> sure. So uh, we ID name from filters. Okay. Yeah. And can I just execute this actually? No, because execute returns a U size, which isn't what I want. So I have to prepare, uh, then execute, I guess. Statement, or unless there's a connection query, can I just run a query off rip? Query row, query row and then, no, okay. So we'll just do it this way, fine. Uh, statement, query, uh, I guess this needs to be unwrapped probably. Query map row. Each row we will pull out. Uh, we'll pull out the ID, and this is an I sixty four. This is the filter ID. Okay. Uh, we also need to specify. We need to query map this with no arguments, uh, and then we also need to pull out the name, which is a string, at index one. And then we just return, okay, uh, filter with ID, which is filter ID ID, name, which is just the name, and the rules, which for now is just nothing. Because we haven't, we haven't implemented that yet. But then, now we should just be able to say unwrap, map, x, x unwrap, and collect. And now we should be able to get back some filters. And now when I run cargo test, uh, we see that we fail at line 1196, which indicates that we got our filters back after we inserted them to the database, but the rules aren't implemented yet, which is like exactly what we expected, uh, which is pretty cool, pretty cool. So now we just have to iterate over our filters and stick them into the right spot. Um, so we first need to extract the filter ID that is associated with this filter we just added. So we say uh, transaction last insert row ID. This will give me the ID that SQL resolved here. So we'll say uh, filter ID is this. Okay. Then what? Then we just have to go over each of our filter filters. So for filter in filters. Um, what are we going to do? we are going to insert into, I guess it depends on the type of the filter, which there is only one type right now. Uh, item, filter, rule, no relationship, side. And what was the other thing? Relationship ID. In this case, we are going to do this. Insert into no relationship filters. 
where we have two values, the, the side and the ID. Uh, side needs to now be actually castable to a number, I guess. Um, Rust, what, like Rust enum to int? Is there just like a little... Um, so I say here that I say bar is equal to one. There's no like real nice casting rules. Ugh. Rust enum from to int. Is there like i32 to enums? Oh my god. <laughs> oh. Yeah, okay, that doesn't shock me. That doesn't shock me. So, because you need to do like the mapping two ways. So a macro that exists to do that for you. What is this doing? Match X. X if X equals enum A as I32. What the fuck? That's, cr I've never seen this in text. That's crazy. Uh, or transmute. Yeah, okay. Okay, we'll just we'll just do it by hand, I guess. Fuck it. Okay, so our relationship side needs to have uh basically, I guess, a function from I32. I64, I guess, because it's uh the integers in SQLite, I believe, are I64s. Um num is an i64 and he's going to return a result relationship side and i guess we can reuse std num parse int error which is like not technically what we want but fuck it and then so we say match num and we'll just say uh one or zero goes to source and one goes to dest and two i64 just does the other way. So we have uh, self, maybe by reference. And he returns an i64. And we just do match self. And we do the inverse of this. So what? Rust macro delete word, word, paste, delete to comma, back, back, paste, space, this. All right. There we go. Um, these guys are supposed to return with single error arrows. Here we say return er std num parse int error in the case where it's fucking broken. Otherwise, okay, num. Oh, he doesn't like that. Okay, fine. We'll make our own. We'll make our own. Fuck it. Um, parse relation side error so then we say derive debug and error on uh something that says what failed to parse relationship side and struct error parse relation Parse relationship side error. Okay. Fine, fine, fine. I'll do it right. Uh, okay. So now we have ways to go from and to database representations. So we can go back to where we were trying to insert it into the DB, which would have been here or something. And now when we insert here, we have what are what does this table look like again uh he has can i go to the other how do i like i want this to go horizontal split instead of vertical so it's easy to read but ah whatever whatever so we have filter id side relationship id and so we need to take in three values i guess okay and the three values that we're going to take in are the filter ID, the side to I64, 
and the uh, all this relation ID here, relationship ID, and then we just pass that in here. Relationship ID zero. Um, the fuck? Uh, oh, the filter ID isn't masked as a filter ID, so it's like this. Okay. So, there. We should have inserted them all, and then all we have to do is get them back. All we have to do is get them back. So, here, we can say, let ret is equal to this, we'll make a mutable, um, and we'll just now pull out relationships for each of these. So, for no relation for, for uh, sorry, item in red, uh, we are going to look for the no relation filters. So we say select filter ID side relationship ID from no relationship filters. where uh, the filter ID is equal to what we pass in. We only care about the side of the relationship ID. These get put in quotes. We say let mute statement is equal to self uh, self connection prepare. Uh, okay, I guess maybe this should all be part of a transaction so that we get like one atomic view into the database. So we'll say let mute transaction is equal to self dot connection transaction unwrap. I actually don't know if these transactions uh, block out other rights. They must. Okay, sure, that's fine. Yeah, 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 they must. Although a good developer would check. So we have a transaction, we have this thing. Um, then we say, we get the items. So we say let rules is equal to statement query map. We pass in our filter ID, which is item ID zero. And then we query, we map each row. Each row will become a new rule which is the uh, filter let rule is equal to filter item filter rule no relationship uh, side and relationship ID which are pulled out of this. So this is our uh, return value. Okay which just means we need side. So side is equal to row get zero, uh, which is an I64. And we say let side is equal to relationship side from I64 side. Yeah. We'll have to figure out how to return errors here later. <laughs> uh, okay, here. Great. And... Let relationship ID is equal to row get one. And we just cast him into, into the relationship ID. Yeah. Yeah. All of that looks good. Uh, so then we just return ret at the bottom. Yo, what are we doing today? We are working on... To do file system, uh, adding filters that basically let us show projects in one view, basically. So we have like a bunch of like flat items. Uh, some of them will have parent-child relationships, right? So we'll have projects, we'll have children. Um, and so we just want to add a custom filter that says, hey, show me all of the things that have no parents. Um, but we want to do that in a way where like the code doesn't know that parent-child relationships exist. Uh, and the reason for that is I feel like this project which is like a file system that just links documents together, could be used for both a, like a ticket tracking system for myself as well as like a wiki of document storage for myself. 
<laughs> so there's really no reason to do any of this, but I feel like it. Um, why does this bank? What's going on here? Filter, filter. Filter has an ID, filter ID, which has an I64. So what is it fucking bitching about? Cannot infer type. There's no types to infer here. No, no type to infer here. Why are you, what are you complaining about? Okay, cargo check. Cannot infer type. But ret is a vec filter, which means item must be a filter. Which means that item ID must exist. Right? Am I high? Type annotations needed? Like what? How come my indexer is resolving the type just fine? Is this something like... Vec light filter? You think that I should just check the item exists? Maybe. It does seem like just specifying this type here seemed to fix it. I guess it didn't know it was a vector, which might have caused some problems. I guess. I guess. Okay. So here, I just want to collect these into a vector and assign them item rules equal rules. Okay. So maybe now, if we run our tests, holy fuck! Dude, it feels so good when they work. I did not expect that to work, but our tests that test that are basically insertion of the rule and retrieval of the rule is working correctly. And let's just double check now if I like do something like say, what ha I, I expect it to flip. It doesn't flip. That's so sick. That's so sick. Okay. So I guess we could probably argue with this like very limited test that the persistence of filters is working, at least according to the test case. Um, which means that all we have to do is show the persisted file system, or sorry, the persisted filter in the file system. So let's maybe cargo format, cargo clippy. Let's just double check that there's nothing crazy happening here. He's bitching that he wants this to say filters len is empty. No, filters is empty. He wants Instead of me checking the length, he wants me to write not is empty, which, fine, whatever. Whatever. Um, looks like my linter will pass now, so we can git status, git add dash u, git commit dash m, checkpoint, or we'll call it whip. Whip add filters to database. And I'll just clean up that commit message later. And it's probably in like a semi-reasonable state. This will probably need to be cleaned up too, but fuck it, whatever. Oh, there's a bunch of unwraps here that I forgot to... I need to make sure that those are banned. Right, right, right now, if I run my lint script, it doesn't have a problem with that. And so I think I think that I can just ban unwraps. Or completely. If I say... Uh, Clippy deny unwrap or something. No. Clippy ban unwrap. What is an unwrap? Okay, so for those not in Rust world, um, basically when you write a function, you say like function, my function will return like a result is the way that you flag it. So it's like the result will say either I am like an integer because I'm good or some sort of error because I'm bad. And so this is, you know, this is going to do some stuff in there. And if I call my function unwrap this is the i32 but if there was an error this unwrap basically says like uh i expect that there will never be an error and if there's an error i'm gonna fucking crash um so i what i do when i'm like prototyping is i just unwrap everywhere i say every time there's an error just fucking crash the program and then later we have to say well the correct thing to do would be to check what happens with that error and like do something same like log it propagate it up do something um and so I'm just trying to say, like, I don't want to accidentally leak those unwraps. I don't want to accidentally, like, finish the commit and say that I'm done until, like, all of those unwraps are, unwraps are like, gone. Um, so 
I think that there's a way to clippy unwrap use. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's clippy deny. Oh, it's deny, I think. Deny clippy. Yeah, unwrap used. And now my linter should tell me to shut the fuck up. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. Okay. Uh now I won't accidentally forget. So get add dash u, get mint dash m, smiley face. And now let's go back into our fuse client. And let's see, what do we want to fucking do for those filters? So I guess at like the root of the file system, at the root of the file system, I just want to list all of the filters and pick and write them down. So here, right now we just say we have one thing and it's the items folder. And I guess we just want to also return all of our filter names. So we can say, uh, for filter, our self db filters, get the filters. And we're just going to map each filter to its name. Um, and probably here we need to unwrap as well. No, he does not return errors right now. And, uh, I think there's a way to like concatenate iterators together. So right now we we expect that when we read a directory, we return an iterator of directory entries. And we kind of want to say that we have two sets of sources here. One is like the items folder and one is our filters. And we, we want to just like stick them together. So I, can say, I think you can say something like this. You can say, here is my items iter. This is an iterator of a single thing. And then can I say uh, filters it is this. Um, this needs to say into it as well. And then uh, he doesn't like that name is a private field. So we can just like pub all these guys. Um, okay. Okay, okay. Then we should be able to say something like items, iter, concat, maybe? Um, no. Append iterators, concat, innate, iterators, iterators, rust. Is it possible to concatenate iterators? Chain. Chain, chain, chain. Okay. So we just say, take all the things from the items iterator, then take all the things from the filters iterator. Wonderful. What doesn't it like about this? He's got name, which is a string. Oh, he wants an OS string. Okay. And this now needs to be immutable reference itself, I guess, which hopefully doesn't break anything. And now if I run my mount, I ho should hopefully see... No. I was hoping to see the projects folder here. So what is wrong with this? Print line root read dir. Um and we'll say got filters. Oh hold on. Did I just mount the wrong file system? No, no I did not. Got filters and we'll list the filters. Self db get filters. Drag a run. Uh, he's mad because I can't log filters probably. Derive debug here so I can print them. Um, Drag a run. LS. So, what the fuck is going on? I'm not seeing that log at all. Oh, got filters here. Root reader, got filters, nothing. So that's unexpected. I was expecting to... Oh, because I only tested the filters. I never added them. Ah. Okay, we'll add one to the database real quick. Uh, I really like how Rust works and how fast it is. I'm currently working with Next.js, React, Nest, TypeScript, World. Should I give it a try? Rust or Go in HTMX is your opinion? Um, okay, so my opinion here overall... 
my general rule of thumb is like, doesn't fucking matter, right? All languages, you will, should be able to like make something valuable. Now, there's like a caveat to that where like, obviously some languages have strengths, some languages have weaknesses, some you might like better than others. So I personally think that it's worthwhile to try a bunch of them. Even if you don't end up using them anywhere professionally, you can like extract ideas from one one language and apply them to another. I've never like done like programming like Haskell or anything, but I feel like I should because I know that like when I was writing a bunch of C plus plus at work, I like guarantee like the way that I coded changed after I started writing Rust at home, um, it for the better. And I'm sure that like that same concept could apply if I try a functional language, right? Like, yeah, I think I think that like so whether or not you like should is like. Like, I don't know, like, do what you're interested in, but I think that you would, like, unlock certain concepts by trying other stuff, you know, whether or not that means that you're going to, like, end up in a certain place or not. What language do I feel most comfortable with? For me, it's Rust. I, I like, Rust kind of lines up ideologically with, like, a lot of the ways that I like to program, um, but, I mean, there's, like, I've written a fair amount of, like, Python and C++ and C and those are all like they're all fine <laughs> I don't know I think I, I I don't find that like when I pick up a new language now the only thing that I really need to think about is like what does their standard library provide because everything else comes pretty quickly like is at least my experience once you've tried like a few then the jump to the it's like I think it's the same with like real languages as well right you were you you learn like English and French, and then you start picking up Spanish. And picking up Spanish is a lot easier than picking up French was. And then when you when, like you pick up like your fourth Latin language, and you're like, oh, this is just like the same as the other ones, you know? Not that I can speak multiple languages, but that's what I've heard. <laughs> uh, okay, so why am I getting no filters? Because I didn't add any. So we just need to add our filter. So we go into our DB tool. And we're just going to try everything but Russ is better. That's, that's my, yeah, that's what I, my opinion. But I mean, I would never, I would never be like going, going to work and working on in any particular language. Unless the language is like, like atrocious. I don't think that it would ever be like a problem. <laughs> it's kind of more what I'm trying to get at, right? Like the concept of being like, should I switch from protocol A to protocol B? It's like, ah, like. If you want to, but like, don't like up, up, like uproot your life for it, <laughs> you know? Uh, okay, let's add a filter here. So we're going to say db add filter. And this is going to be the projects filter with our singular rule, which I can just, we can just say filters. <coughs> and puck a little slice on there. And now if I cargo, cargo run the db tool with run filter that should inject that into the database and now when i mount my thing we should see a projects folder let's go okay that's pretty sick now now when we go into the projects folder we're seeing unhandled path projects and so now all we have to do is in our fuse file system in the client when we parse the paths we just need to now try to resolve if we match a a filter folder so we can just say if we have some filter id matches filter folder path then we're going to return a path purpose which is execute filter with the filter id and that doesn't exist yet so here we need to add a new thing that is a filter that has a filter ID. And now we need to stub out this matches filter folder. So here we say matches filter folder. We said it would return a filter ID and he's unimplemented. Okay. And is there anything else that needs to be done? Argo check. Certainly a bunch of stuff isn't going to compile now. Um, because 
things are not expecting the filter. So I guess we just go to the places that try to use the path and throw in a path purpose, path purpose filter, filter ID. And I think this is the read directory call. Yeah, so this is listing items of directory. So this, we're actually gonna have to do some work on it for now, we could just say it's unimplemented. Uh, read link parses the path and he will return not a link in this case, which is great. And I think that should be everything. No, 238, where is that? Get file type. So just here, the filter is also a directory. Okay, cool, so that compiles, and now all we have to do is figure out what the fuck the directory area looks like for this. Um, so we have the DB. Uh, we are going to get filters into iter bind that the filter is has the same ID as the one that we have remembered. I guess maybe we should do this by name right now because uh, we don't actually have the filter ID on disk. Sure. So we'll say the filter name matches the filter name. Unwrap for now. And so then we should just be able to say that we want to execute this filter. Uh, let's fix this to say string for now. Um, okay, and so then we execute the filter. So we have the filter dot rules, and we should be able to say self dot db uh, run filter. And we're just gonna run the filter with the rules. And then we will return item IDs. So for each item ID, we need to get the item. So we say, uh, let item ID is equal to this. Uh, I guess this guy needs to be a little ampersand. And then we say for item, uh, we're going to say item IDs map into iter map. So for each thing, we're going to take the item ID and we're going to look that up in the database. Um, get item by ID. And then we're gonna get his name. Um, cool. And, oh wait, no, maybe not. Maybe we just uh, we just say that he's a link. How does this like item link shit work? Dur entry link sibling name into. Okay, we'll do that. We will do that. So then we return a link with the name. Okay, cool. Cool. So now we should end up with a bunch of links, two other items with the name. Okay, I think that seems reasonable. I don't see any reason that this wouldn't work. Uh, other than the fact that we need to return this. So we say uh, box new let item iterator is equal to this, and we just return item iterator. Okay. Sure. Seems like that will work. So can we now cargo run the to-do FS? Fuck. So 390, GG. This should be a filter name here and here. And here, this now needs to return a filter name, which is just a string. Um, and this is unimplemented actually, so we need to check this. So, what? We just check. We need to probably to take the DB in here. We certainly need to look at what filters are available to us. And what are we going to do? We're going to say DB get filters. We are going to check if we're in the root. So, we expect basically something that is just filter name. Um, but not items. Because we have, right now our root has items and filter A, filter B. So I guess 
the okay yeah yeah so we'll say uh if path equals full uh items folder we just don't match this um okay but this needs to be a path new like this Okay. Otherwise, uh, we can ch check let first is equal uh, hmm. let path iterator is path iter and the first thing is equal to path it next. Uh, this is actually just the root, probably. Second is the filter name, and third should be none. So here, if there is anything after filter name in path, we are not the filter folder. We are not a filter folder. So this should be filter name, and this should be root. So now we have our filter name, and we can just return that. Uh, yeah, so we can just say return filter name. Shockingly, that's it. Which will match a bunch of filters that don't exist. So maybe we'll say fix me, check if filter exists. But maybe that's like okay, because when we actually try to like list the contents of that filter, we'll just get nothing. Maybe? I guess we'll find out. Um, what is this guy? He's an option OS string, so we just need to map, uh, map x, x into, I guess. Uh, he doesn't like that. To string lossy, I guess. To string. Sure. Okay. Seems reasonable. So, now, if we run this, I think there's no more unimplemented kicking around, so I actually don't know what's gonna fucking happen. We crashed. Unwrap on an unvalue at line 360. So what is that? That's here. Oh, right. So this is the fucking problem. Uh, where we try to use that filter that doesn't exist, and we try to unwrap on that. Okay, so let's let's actually handle that here for now. So self.db, or not self.db. We'll just look at the db. And... Uh, get filters nope it's db get filters hey jewel thanks for the prime appreciate it and we'll find where filter is filter dot name is equal to a filter name i guess here uh if the filter name is invalid we'll just return none so i'll throw a question mark on there if there is no filter name we do not match okay and then we say if the filter name matches, uh, and if this is none, I guess, is none, then we return none. Because we didn't find a filter. Otherwise, we return some filter name. Okay. Uh, db has to be mutable, so we just throw a little mute on here, which means that here we need to throw a little mute on here, which means that here we need to throw a little mute on here. Oh my god, mute here, which means here we need to rip mute. God, this is going to be a disaster. Surely that's going to end up propagating all sorts of places. Cargo check. Actually, works okay. Shocking. Okay. Uh, unmount test mount. Target is busy. C dot dot. Unmount test mount. Okay, cool. Target run. LS test mount. So now we have projects. Here we have unhandled path projects, which is surprising to me. So that means that we didn't match correctly. Um, so we can look at these uh, matches uh, filter. Folder, and we can just see where the fuck did we go wrong here. 
Um, let's see. Print line. Or uh, I guess we'll just log error so it's like fucking easy to see. I make two, three. Uh, so we got one. Oh, that's not helpful, actually. So here we can say uh, found filter name with the filter name. And here we'll log uh, success matched filter. Okay. And we ls this again. And what the fuck? Test mount projects. So we actually aren't seeing either of those logs, which is wild. Are we even getting here? Uh, checking filter folder match for the path. ls this again. Okay, checking filter folder match project. And we're just not getting farther down there. That's crazy. So uh, not the item folder. Here we'll check. Uh, here we'll say found filter name. Oh, it's this. This is backwards. I'm pretty sure. Here we're returning if it's none, but we want to say if it's anything. Is sum. Return none. Return none. All right, that's that's what we're missing, probably. So now if we ls test mount projects, there we go. Okay, so there's something odd going on there where stuff that I don't expect to see there is there. So we're going to have to take a look at that. But it does look like we have run the filter. And so now all we have, to do, we, we have to do is make sure that these guys link back to their original folders instead of being marked as folders. So somewhere we say uh, we check to see if something should be linked to an item ID. Um, matches item link here. And so what we do here is we say, well, are you in the relationship folder? Because um, right now, the only place where those guys can link is uh, from this, like, locking relationship. But now we can also link by being in a, in a filter folder. So we just need to add that constraint here. So we can say matches item link. We'll copy paste this, I guess. And we'll say this is uh, now matches item link by uh, relationship. And we'll just have another one that matches item link by uh, filter. Okay. And this guy will return if, if let sum x is equal to matches item link by relationship mat matches item link by relationship path db we return x we return okay sum x okay uh, otherwise we return none okay none nothing matched uh, and then we just have to say Else, if matches item link by filter path, and probably don't need the DB in here, and this probably can't fail. Probably. Else, if let sum x equals this, return okay sum x. Okay. Now we just have to implement this. So uh, we just check if path is equal to the items folder 
that doesn't count. So we'll just say immediately we return none here. Uh, actually, we can probably reuse the code we just wrote. Probably. So we can say uh, if path.parent matches uh, filter folder, if our parent matches a filter folder, then we're a fucking item link. So if this does, if this is not true, we return none. Uh, and he actually does need the db here. So here we take in db db this, and then that means here we have to take in db db. Boom. Um, cannot apply unary operator to type. What the fuck is it bitching about? Oh. Uh, if this is not, we return not. Try removing the method call. Why? Oh, maybe we just do this. Uh, oh, we need to unwrap it. I see. Sure. Okay. And DB needs to be mutable. Okay. Which means that this needs to be mutable. Which means that this needs to be mutable. Okay. 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 And uh, then all we have to do is then check our name and find our item ID from our name. Uh, so self.db get, or, uh, not self, sorry, db get items.find, or we look for all the items into iter, find items where the item name, hello, item, Item dot name? Why is name not one of the things in there? Hello? What does this guy return? He returns a vector of db items. Oh. Unwrap. There we go. Item name is equal to our path dot file name. Uh, into, or to stir, or fuck. Unwrap, to stir, unwrap. There we go. Sure. Um, so we say what? If let sum of item is equal to this shit show of a thing, I, we return sum uh, item ID, else return none. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think that might do it. Might do it. Cargo check. It was kind of bitching, but it's not. Like, it looks like we're good. Cargo run. Okay. So here, if we go to projects, that's good. So these are working correctly. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So image to text has all these children. Uh,. Ooh, I think we're showing unblocked tickets here. I think that our filter in the database was using the wrong relationship ID. I bet. I'm pretty sure. Let's just quickly fix that. SQLite browser, and we can look at our relationships. Our one is parent child, two is block block by. Our filters requires relationship ID two, and this should be relationship ID one. Yeah. Can I just uh, hit save on that? Apply. Write changes. Okay. Let's mount again. And now this should probably work correctly. So we have test mount, projects. We have one project with these children. Fuck yes, baby! Let's go! Okay, yeah, so now we can look at all these children that we have, and we can say, oh, he's got my one parent, and I block this thing. That's sick. That's sick. Cool. All right. So, I think we just kind of beat the buzzer this time. We're an hour and 54 minutes in. I try to keep them under two hours. Um, and yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty sick. So, what do we do today? We added the concept of filters as a whole. So, we now have in our database filters by name 
that store only one type of filter right now. We have one type of filter that is, um, we do not have a relationship that matches this criteria, right? So in this case, we are saying that here are all of the things that have no parents, uh, but those are stored in the database in a generic way so that we could theoretically like chain them together if we added some more and um, and show multiple filter types. So we might in the future say, I want to show all items that aren't blocked or items that are of this project are not blocked. There might be something there where in the future we might want to show as we might want to store relationships for given tasks, right? You might want to say things in this project. I, do, I want to show the of the things of this project. I also want to show these other things, but for now, for now, this is pretty sick. For now, this is good enough. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, if you like what you saw, I stream most days around one or two o'clock Pacific time. I've been streaming kind of like a variety of stuff. So we, we've been doing like operating systems. We've been doing artificial intelligence we did like this like maze thing on the right as well as some like open gl stuff as in general so trying to vary it up to keep it keep it fresh um more to keep myself <laughs> stimulated uh stream most days around one or two o'clock um there's code usually ends up on github so in twitch there's a link to the github and a discord if you want to shoot the shit while we're offline um there's a YouTube link in the Twitch description for if you want to catch stuff um, later. You know, VODs go up there. If you're watching on YouTube and you want to swing by and say hi, there should be a Twitch link in the YouTube description. Otherwise, uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye!